communication. Thank you, Professor Matulet, for the nice introductory words. So I am the head of the Office for Environment of the city of Dresden, but I am a physician, actually. Uh, I am not at an administrative person, so I am not an enemy for uh, scientists. But maybe I tell you something that uh, scientists uh, won't like so much. But this is because of my function and not my personal attitude. So when I thought about the title, or Professor Bernhofer uh, asked me if I can tell you something, what you learned from the Reclam project. and. That's why the title is What Have You Learned from the uh, Climate Adaptation Project. So that's why you're a professor. <laughs> so it's still not working, so we have to try it again. Maybe now? Mm. Maybe I use the mouse oh, on the right hand side. Okay, the button on the right hand side. So I changed the title a little bit. What are the lessons learned that we learned from the uh, climate adaptation program? So three years with Reclam, not past Reclam, but with Reclam. So we don't say past, it's a program, and the program is still running, and that's why it's already the first positive issue. And what are the lessons learned from the implementation of this uh, program? So the agenda, uh, first I tell you something about the time before Reclam, and then I talk about this project. Many colleagues uh, took part in this, Professor Bernhard Hofer, Professor Machelat were the lead partners uh, with the Technical University of Freiberg and Dresden, the Institute for Tropospheral uh, Research. So many scientists were part of this program. Then there was the State Office for Environment and Geology. And then the practical partners, this was the city of Dresden, uh, the Office for uh, Sewage System of Dresden, and also economic participants. So in Dresden, we started already in 2004 with the climate adaptation and the triggering moments in the order how I uh, name them here. So this event here, Mr. Pielens took me here and my colleague and he said, you have to listen to this. These are things that could be important for us. So I was always a participant at these uh, Annaberg Climate Days, and I listened to the scientists, what they are talking about. And so I thought um, it's relevant, and when it gets hotter, and when it gets uh, more humid, and there was a graph like this, Professor Schönwiese uh, showed it to us. So the temperature maximum is shifting, and this graph gets uh, wider. So there will be, will be more frequent extreme events. So I understood all this. And so we said we also have to tell this uh, the city council of Dresden. And so on the 12th of August in 2002, I went to the city council, the committee for environment and uh, municipal management, and I talked to them and told them what I learned here. 
So uh, since 6 o'clock in the morning, there was very heavy rain fall the whole day. But there was some discourse. And there was a member of a very small party right now. So he said it's typical Kondorfer. He heard something, and now he wants to get funds for uh, adaptation measures. So probably uh, he needs some more jobs in the environmental office and so on. So there was the first was the knowledge, and then there was a discourse already. And I'm really thankful to this person. I wouldn't have said this that way, but so it's raining very hard right now, and I'm concerned. And so they were very skeptical and said, so, so this rain is somehow related to climate change. So <laughs> I don't know about this, but I think it's related to a flood. And so I didn't sleep for the next days, because then there was really a flood, and now people were concerned. So we had the knowledge, we had the discourse, and now uh, the people really were affected by this. 3.5 billion of euros of uh, the damage, and it was not because of the River Elbe, but uh, the smaller river, Weiseritz, was uh, more dangerous. Actually, you only have a warning period of four or five hours, so you cannot do much about this, and that's why I was very interested in this uh, 5B weather pattern. And then the year after this, there was the Millennium Summer 2003, a very hot summer, and so People were concerned, people were affected, and so the city council asked me and voted for it that we have in Tristan an agenda, a program uh, for climate adaptation. So there were no votes against it. So we uh, talked about our measures for climate protection. So that means uh, to reduce greenhouse gases, but then um, measures were added how we can adapt uh, to the changing uh, climate, especially the landscape plan, uh, vegetation, adaptation measures and steps. And so we were the first city that had a, a decision like this of the a city council, and now we wanted to generate this uh, concept. And in 2006, I was in this committee and I uh, suggested something there, and everything was already in there that we used later on. So all fields of actions were named and we already uh, suggested measures, and we already started to implement these measures. For example, a new uh, drinking water protection zone, it was a preventive measure, so this is very important because you can only uh, find this where there is no settlement yet, where there are no buildings yet. And so this was very hard to find in Dresden, an area which you can use as a drinking uh, water protection area. And later on, uh, we found out how important it is to have this complete redundancy of uh, the water equipment. So if you have a lot of radiation in summertime, in early summer, and maybe the year before or two years before, extreme precipitation so that there were a lot of nutrients in the water reservoirs and uh, suddenly you cannot use uh, this water anymore for drinking water because uh, the filters are clogged or because the water is really poisonous. So with this knowledge of 2001, 2 and 3, uh, starting with the Annenberg Climate Days, we used this knowledge to implement all these measures. So I, I very I'm very thankful to uh, this event and also to the uh, State Ministry for the Environment that uh, they put uh, this uh, topic 
uh, really on top of the agenda and also uh, they won Mr. Küchler, who really uh, um, was working with this in Saxony. So as a city, we would not have been uh, able to get this far without the knowledge. So it's important to have uh, knowledge and to have the administration and not uh, and enough people in the administration, then you can take preventive measures and you can build up such a concept. So this was the aspect of the city of Tristan. And now uh, we go to the next uh, aspect. So this is the original climate adaptation program. So why did you need this as the city of Tristan if you already started with it? But it's like this, we are, we are in the year 2008 now. So uh, five years ago, we had this uh, drought summer and six years ago, there was the flood. So really you have an amnesty and you don't remember this flood anymore. So maybe only 10% or 15% of the stakeholders really want to spend money on a research of this flood if this is only a century flood and it will come only back in 100 years. So that's not to, to laugh about. Uh, really, people discuss like this. And our mayor in Dresden uh, told me in 2013, uh, she was surprised because uh, she got an apartment in the flood area and she thought uh, that there will be not this flood anymore um, during the next 100 years. And so the mayor lived in this apartment in the flood area and could not use uh, the washing uh, machine and everything was wet. And so this mayor was concerned again and affected. So without this uh, personal effect, you won't find, almost not find people in the administration to get uh, the decisions for long-term and binding uh, resources, uh, personnel or uh, finances. Later on, we have a lecture about communication. So this is the important thing. Uh, it's not that we don't have enough knowledge. And it's not so important if it's the newest model calculation or an old one. If the trends are the same, it, it doesn't matter for us. But of course, if the trends change, we have to think about this. But as long as the knowledge is the same and there will be extreme events and there will be heavier precipitation and more frequent, we know what to do about this. We know that the regional bodies of water are the most dangerous, not the Elbe, not the big rivers, uh, the smaller regional uh, water bodies and also the local water bodies. So you cannot do anything with the fire department if there's already the thunderstorm like in 2014 and we have very heavy rain in one area, in one district. So this thunderstorm just stays there and doesn't <laughs> go further towards the east. <laughs> so the thunderstorm says just stay there in one area and so you cannot get prepared to this. We need preventive measures now. And our members of the city council uh, understood this. And because of this discourse that we had with uh, more people, with uh, politicians, with people from the econo economy, uh, because of this Reclam project, uh, the games, uh, the aims really uh, were spread to uh, more people and decision makers and stakeholders. So this was the most important task of Reclam. And the second uh, very important success of Reclam was it was not a project where only scientists were working, 
and they reported their results, but the scientists uh, worked together with the stakeholders. The stakeholders were really integrated into the project. So after finishing this project, uh, they didn't have to transfer the knowledge uh, to the people, but uh, the knowledge was already there because all the people were part of this project. So, so this was very important for uh, the implementation of this project. And now I've got the green book so that you see what we've did. It's, it's a big book, a lot of knowledge in there. So how will the climate trend uh, look like for Saxony? So that's the work of the Technical University. So the social boundary conditions in the region and a whole catalog of measures for individual areas and sectors. So the most important uh, sectors are these. So these are strategic topics. So for example, the topic uh, nat um, nature protection and biodiversity and uh, protection of human health. So we didn't find any partners in the practice that really wanted to work with this and continue uh, this topic. So the nature protection tells us we protect the nature as it is now. We want to conserve it. If um, I will work with this uh, topic, I have to accept the process. I have to accept that the nature of today cannot survive uh, for eternity if the outer boundaries change. So I'm glad that there is NABU here and Mr. Mann, please listen to me <laughs> because I praise you. So I'm very happy that you are open to this process. So that's really nice. So the protection of human health, uh, the health care people think that's not a topic for now. We talk about vaccination or we, we care about vaccination for this year. So we cannot do anything about this. But it will be a topic in the future. So when we worked with this program, there were a lot of people involved uh, over a time period of five years. And uh, many parts of this Klimzug project were taken out and were even integrated into uh, the federal measures with the uh, building law and the climate protection amendment. So things are now the basis already what we wished for. So this big project Klimzug really uh, could uh, be successful there. And we got the decision of the city council that this will be implemented. And so the city council was already very cautious. In 2004, they really wanted to do the project and they want to implement everything. And now they said they will check what they will implement. And when we talk about checking, then maybe there are developments that we don't have to do this at all. But uh, a team was founded, a work group, uh, but we actually had this team already because this was the team that worked with Reclam together. So when we talk about implementation, we concentrate on the things that we did in the city, but I will also talk a little bit about the region. So especially the regional planning association uh, is implementing all this in the regional plans. There are uh, certain areas, certain aims, and certain basics named. And since we work together with these colleagues, uh, a lot happened. So in this uh, central program, it's called Integrated Regional uh, climate Adaptation Program for the region of Dresden. 
So there are some statements of the program. So we have a new synthetic uh, climate function map. We already had one uh, before, but it was much simpler as what we can do now. And this was verified. So here you can see this map, uh, the colors. Uh, show the heating structure, the overheating structure, and the settlement uh, structure. And the reference is the outer area where you don't have urban structures, and then you have the different areas in the city which are affected uh, differently. So you have uh, Große Garten, it's a big park, so it's the same cool, uh, cool temperatures at, as at the outside. And we have, for example, the <laughs> stone-built uh, European city, so the inner city of Tristan. So even when we had this uh, decision on the climate adaptation, uh, they still uh, continued with the concept of a stony city. So these were the individual measurement uh, runs. So we look at uh, areas there. So there is still an empty area. And so all the city planners, uh, they want to make something of this. And there it's a cool area. So it has the same temperature as uh, the outskirts of Tristan. Then we have the Leipziger Straße Street. There are four degrees more. So we have, uh, on a very short distance, we have differences of temperature of 8 degrees, what we measured. It's not what you feel. Uh, there is even a bigger difference. So again, people might be concerned. And so people are looking for an, for an apartment, and then such a map is very important because it tells you when you get older and maybe you don't go in an area where it's always very hot. So uh, this also has an effect uh, on, on the planners uh, that they will really design areas that way. So we need uh, tracts uh, for uh, the air for air exchanging and we need uh, areas where cold air can be generated, can be produced, and we tell the planners what they have to pay attention to, but we won't talk about this now. So the consens then in the only in the environment topic is now uh, for the whole administration. So we want to have a network of open spaces and in Dresden we are happy because we have uh, the bodies of water uh, in the past they were put into big pipes, but we renaturalize them and we open these uh, water bodies and alongside of these uh, rivers or streams, uh, water courses, the cold air can go into the city. And the first uh, green area was planned uh, at the Weiseritz River. So there is a green band uh, from the inner city of Dresden to Freital, uh, to the Tarrant Forest, where uh, cold air is produced. And it's also an open area for, uh, in case of floods of the river Weiseritz. So there were some uh, adaptation measures. These are not all of them, but, but only partly they are implemented. And it's not much more than what we had before, Reklam, actually. So the sewage system, for example, uh, it was investigated a lot uh, um, during the Reclam project. So what happens if there's overflow? What happens 
if there is backwater, where can we put this water? Uh, into the basements? Or are there areas where we can uh, supply it to? So many people thought about this. They made uh, models of this. And there are also control elements, so we can do a lot about this. What else do we do? Uh, we are also looking at the ground uh, water. There's also overheating. But of course, you want to use uh, the ground water, not by fountains, but because of the thermal uh, use for cooling. So uh, it's in the big department stores. There is an underground uh, garage and uh, the hot air from the department store goes into this basement underground and uh, the heat goes uh, into the ground water. So you have to think of this. So when we were measuring this, we were really shocked because around these buildings we have an overheating of the ground water by 15 to 20 degrees, extreme overheating. So there is no rule to prevent this. You cannot do anything about this. And so that's all what I want to talk about. Uh, there are also other things that you cannot do anything about this. Uh, it was also the result of Reclam uh, investigating uh, building buildings and how do they react uh, to changes in climate. But what we actually do is this. So it's a uh, square, Strasburger Platz. Uh, there were apartment buildings before and they were got rid of and now we have department stores and shopping. Uh, centers there, and opposite of this, uh, the Cle uh, uh, factory. So, so you need a lot of uh, energy there for air conditioning in there. And uh, this is a birth station in the uh, uh, hospital in Dresden. And now we have to read what is uh, written there. So it's also a class uh, facade. So patients and uh, doctors uh, tell us that it's very hot inside. So it was not meant like this. So everybody knows uh, that it gets hot inside. And so uh, they were suing the company that was planning it and the court uh, speaker tells us uh, that there is no reason for suing it. So it was never said that the temperature should never be uh, higher than 26 uh, degrees. So this class facade is contrary to a, a standard, the German standard. So as long as there is uh, no regulation how to adapt to the climate change. There won't be an implementation, especially with public buildings. So there is the uh, there is uh, the regional court of audit, and they will check that uh, the standards are really uh, kept, and everything else means that you spend too much money. And that's why we found out that uh, we had a lot of success for transferring uh, knowledge. We uh, made up a concept, we had a good regional cooperation, but we were only successful for preventive measures where there is a legal basis for it so that there is something preventive in, in the law, for example, in the water law. But uh, less success for the binding uh, building planning and almost no success in civil engineering and building because there is no legal basis for this for preventive uh, measures. So we cannot uh, change anything for roof building or 
anything because it's not part of the standard. And still, uh, the climate change topic is an environmental topic still. So these were the successes that we reached or, or not reached. And what we can learn from it, so the administration is uh, very hard to deal with uncertainties. So, and for the first time, we can change this with the flood risk management planning. So that's the first time that we have a tool that we can deal with uh, certainties and risks and the administration is still uh, forced uh, to deal with this topic. Uh, the question of uh, financial implementation and this weighing. So for the addition of our work, we actually needed lawyers. We should have needed lawyers. Of course, we would not be finished with this project by yet, by now, but so we actually need Klimzug too. So things that we know now, we have to implement this uh, to have a legal basis. And I hope that maybe there are also approaches of the state uh, to the federal government. Thank you. Oh, many, many thanks for a very useful, meaningful uh, lecture. And there were, you said a lot of things. Uh, we actually co work with uh, the large project you mentioned. So you actually mentioned some of the topics that were very uh, important also for us. It's a project work. Uh, and we knew about uh, this why working on the project. And also for you, I think you should bear in mind what you just heard and try to uh, implement this and communicate this, especially in your scope of action. Many thanks. One question, only one, please. Mr. Mann, who was so praised by Mr. Kondorfer from the Federal Association yeah, of Kondorfer, Nature and Environment. Dr. Don Kerfer, I'm very close to you and I support this as a citizen of our city. Many thanks for having such a circumspect, uh, so much circumspection on behalf of a head of a city office. But the administration is not alone and, and cannot do it all on. Uh, themselves because the citizens and the people in the, on the spot sh should be involved. If you find a poster outside, I have it here as well. The KFW Foundation actually supported us for this in order to support your work. And as to water bodies, we have the Geo Blue Catching, the Catchers of the Kites Creek and the Priestnitz Creek. And now, uh, now we're working on uh, Third Creek, and we would like to show that uh, to the administration. So we want to support you, accompany you as a citizen, as the citizens, because you need citizenship in support for your actions. And I hope we will do better in the future than we did in the past. If you agree with uh, exceeding the time limits, then we can accept a second question or further questions. I'm Matthias Paul. I'm landscape architect from Dresden. Many thanks to you personally. In 2006, you told me, I was in your office, and you told me, Mr. Paul, yes, do it roughly, coarsely, for the city in order to create kind of corridors uh, to have an open uh, construction and to allow circulation. This and, and uh, this support I got from you was very courageous. Many thanks for that. And just to tell the, the, uh, the people here in the room, 
Just to explain the, the climatological situ condition of the city, we have an actually new city motive. It's not about urb classic urban conditions, but environmental aspects being more in the focus of urbanism. We have kind of condensation course with a pulsating urban planning surrounding. We have a flexible urban tissue that is flexible to respond to impacts. I think this w that will be the city of the third millennium. So the Central European uh, city is no longer the brickwork city, the city of uh, stones and bricks, but it's a pulsating city, pulsing city, able to uh, respond and to absorb a resilient city. First of all, Urb urban planning activities have difficulties. It's about making losers winners. I actually asked, went to the offices and I collected two uh, answers. It's not possible to run green cuts through the town. And uh, another uh, argument was we would need a Rockefeller to do this. I think these are two deformations we have, two kind of diseases we have, we, uh, that is a contradiction or resistance to the new processes. The new processes should be researched, investigated into, but it cannot be researched because we don't, do not have the enough knowledge to be able to do this. But I have an idea of a pulsating city with micro-processes, every drought, every event of any type, every occasion causing smaller scale changes in the city, all, that, all those events, incidents, should be analyzed across the surface in order to organize a continuous adaptability uh, process in order to support the strength of the city as it is today. But we do not have enough knowledge on the in the climatological terms. We already spoke about the air streams, cold air corridors in the city. It's not just about the water bodies, but also the volume flows of cold air flowing through the city. That means not just near ground uh, streams and flows of air masses, but we have three-dimensional patterns, structures, showing very interesting and promising constellations. The, these uh, circulations are higher and even towards the uh, city center. And so I come back to your actual topic. We do not have the actual knowledge how to make good use of the existing airstreams, airflows, in order to adapt our cities. So, so we need to research that, convey the knowledge. Very briefly, I'd like to seize this opportunity in order to maintain the knowledge of the Klimset project. A climate change server has been set up where a lot of documents are collected, maintained, preserved in cooperation with the university press. This w because we had a lot of uh, requests. Uh, you can find us uh, in Google. So that means the base, the knowledge base has been collected and will not be lost. Very important.